Hi, Bo Pilgrim here with Bo Knows Insurance and Reed Insurance. Today I'm going to talk to you about home insurance claims, what to do, and then also how to talk to adjusters. In this video, we're going to cover four different topics. Those are going to be, number one is going to be, what do you do before you turn in the claim? Number two is going to be, how do you report a claim? Number three will be, what to expect in the process. And then number four is going to be, how to talk to the adjuster. So let's talk today about turning in a claim on your homeowner insurance policy. Um, we're gonna talk about those four different topics, but let's start with number one. What do you do before you even have a claim? Well, the first thing you need to do is you need to go ahead and make sure that you stop the damage, right? Let's say that you know a tree has come through your roof or done damage, or you got water coming into your house because of a storm. Well, the first thing is call a roofer. Call a roofer, have them come out and put a tarp over your roof to keep the damage from getting worse. And then make sure you get your family to someplace safe. Well, let's say that you have a fire. Well, make sure that you call the fire department, get them there so they can respond to the claim and, and put the fire out to stop the damage, to keep it from being any worse. You know, also, you know, let's say that you got a water pipe that burst inside of the house. Maybe it's the washing machine hose has burst it. You know, you got up in the, in the morning, you hear some water running and you notice the floor is wet and you're wondering, uh-oh, that's not right, right? So you follow the noise, you go to the laundry room, you see that the water pipe has burst. Well, turn off the water and stop the water so that the damage is not going to get any worse. You know, that's the first thing you need to do is secure your home and then secure your family. So, you know, secure your, so just think about that. That's the first thing you want. You secure your home, make sure the damage is not going to get worse. Call whoever you need to be, to make sure that the damage does not get worse. Then secure your family, get them someplace safe so that, so that, you know, they don't have to be worried about, you know, where they're going to stay or whatever. So then the next thing, so that's number one is what do you do before the claim? That's the first thing is stop the damage, get your family safe. Number two is, you know, you know, how do you report the claim? Well, you're going to call your insurance agent. Uh, this is an important step, especially if you have an independent insurance agent. What we're going to do when you first call us is we're going to ask you a series of questions. And those questions are going to be determined a few different things. One of them is going to be, do you actually have a claim or not? Now, you may be thinking, well, okay, if I've got roof damage or I've got water in my house or a fire, surely I've got a claim and I want to just go ahead and get that reported and I want to get an adjuster to my house as fast as possible. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And that's where an independent insurance agent is going to help you. Because if you've got a direct writer or um, just an agent that you call an 800 number and you don't have a relationship with whoever that agent is as you would with your independent insurance agent, you know, they're just going to take the information from you and report a claim and then you're going to have what is called a chargeable incident or a chargeable claim against you regardless if they pay you or not. Now this is really important. Your independent agent, such as we are, is going to ask you a few questions to make sure that you need to report the claim or not. The reason we do that is to make sure that you don't have an incident on your record that is going to be chargeable by your insurance company and they and then they don't even pay you anything understand this now the insurance company is not looking to just find some sort of excuse to charge you with something and charge you more money but most of the policies are going to have some sort of a discount on your policy if you've never had a claim it's called a claims-free discount well if you have a claim whether they pay you or not you just lost that claims-free discount because now you have a claim right well that then becomes a chargeable incident because you lost that discount. We're gonna to talk to you and make sure, do you need to report this or not? You know, we're gonna ask you a few different questions such as, you know, have you, you know, okay, so you've got roof damage. Have you talked to a roofer yet? When you, say, you may say, no, I just, I wanna get a roofer to come out. Well, why do you think you have roof damage? Well, I know we had a hailstorm come through. My neighbor got a, is getting a new roof. You know, so I wanna just come take a look and just see. Well, the problem with that is as much as we'd love to be able to just send an adjuster, you know, to come and take a look and just tell you whether you got damage or not. Unfortunately, that's an expense for them and it's going to become a chargeable claim. Um, that is just the system and how it works. I know that doesn't necessarily feel right, but that is how it works. 
What we're going to advise you to do is to reach out to a roofer and have them come take a look and just see what if you've got damage or if the roof is wore out or if your roof is fine. Typically, if you got some, a pretty new roof and, and there's like pea-sized hail, your roof is probably fine. But they will come out, take a look, and make sure. And what we suggest is that whether it's a roofer or contractor or whoever else it is, to make sure that you look them up online. You know, see, have they, do they have any reviews and do they have a bunch of five-star reviews? If it's a contractor that doesn't have a bunch of reviews, then I would suggest to steer clear from them and stay with one that you see that is trusted. You may also reach out to the community, maybe through social media or other things, and just ask around, hey, do you have, is there a roofer you can suggest? We at our agency, we have roofers that we have come to know and respect and know that they typically know and will look out for the best for you and for the company to determine, do you actually have a chargeable claim or not? So first, you know, so we're going to direct you to do that. We're also going to ask you a bunch of questions. We're going to try to figure out how bad is the damage? Do we need to tell the company that they need to send somebody out to take care of water mitigation, you know, sucking up water because you have a busted water line? Or if we need to tell them that, hey, they're going to need a place to stay. Can you please speed up sending money to them so they can find another place to stay in the meantime while their house is being repaired? You know, we're going to do those different things and we're going to make sure that the adjuster has a full picture of what to expect, make sure they have the best contact for you, and also tell you what to expect Make sure you have all the contact information you need for the adjuster and know when to expect a call from them. And then also, since we'll have that information for you, we can be a secondary person to talk to on the claim. So, all right, so let's talk about number three. What is, you know, what is going to happen or what should you expect in the process? So, all right, so you've talked to, the, talked to the agent. The agent has said, yes, we need to report a claim. We're gonna get a claim turned in for you. They ask you some questions, give that information to the insurance company, to the adjuster, and then they will reach out to you. So here's what's gonna happen. Your agent's gonna give you the information that they gather from the insurance company, which is gonna include your claim number, your policy number, the insurance company's name, who the adjuster is, what their email address is, and then also what their direct phone number is. We're gonna provide that, those pieces of information for you probably over the phone, and then maybe also, depending on the technology that your agent has, for instance, we would also text it to you and email it to you depending on what your preference is. Because um, you need to have that information, right? So what's gonna happen after that? Your adjuster is gonna call you within a business day. So if it's in the morning that you report it, probably by the end of the day, they should talk to you and tell you, hey, you know, I just wanna get an initial, initial assessment. If we need to get some sort of money to you quickly so you can find a place to stay, we'll wire that money to you. And then also they'll let you know when they're going to come out to assess the damage that you have. So they do that, then they come out and assess the damage. They're going to take a look at your home, walk through the damaged area, draw some diagrams, take some pictures, make a bunch of notes. Then they will go back to their, to their office to finish that. Now they may be able to give you some sort of an idea, but just understand that whatever idea they give you at that time is probably not firm yet. So they go back to the office, they'll finish figuring out what is it going to cost. You know, what is it going to cost per room? What is it going to cost to get your home back like it should be? You know, is there somebody else that's at fault and we can get them to pay for it instead of you paying for it? They're going to also figure out how much time it should take. And they're going to give you an estimate on what they believe it's going to take. Now, when you get that estimate, it may be a little bit confusing to you, but just under, you know, remember, you can call out to your adjuster and just have them help you understand what you're looking at because there's going to be a lot of data on that report and it's okay. They're more than happy to help you. Your agent is also more than happy to help you, but just understand at this point, your adjuster is the best point of reference for your claim. Um, so you're going to get that estimate and you're going to notice a few different things. One of them is that the total that they're going to pay may or may not match what it's going to cost depending you know, based off of the contractor you've talked to. If that happens, don't worry. Don't freak out, it'll be okay. Talk to the contractor, see what's maybe missing, and then reach out to the adjuster and just say, hey, I noticed that you, you know, that you came up with this number, my contractor came up with this number, you know, they're different, you know, can we take a look to see what we can figure out? They're more than happy to take a look at that. Hey, look, nobody's perfect. Um, maybe the cost is higher than he expected for labor or materials. 
or maybe he just missed something. It, it, it happens. You know, we're all human, right? So reach out to them, talk about it, and see if you can work it out. If you have any trouble, reach out to your agent and they'll help you out. Um, another thing you're going to notice is that the, claim, the initial claim payment is going to be for actual cash value. And they're going to have this number on there. They're going to call it, they're going to call it either recoverable depreciation or hold back or something like that. Understand this is what the process is. Your adjuster will figure it out. They'll cut you a check for the actual cash value amount, which is going to take away depreciation. They will pay that back to you once you show that you've done the work. This is how all insurance policies work. Now you may be thinking, but I thought I had a replacement cost policy. Well, you may, you may not. Um, you know, I'm not looking at your policies. I'm not sure what you have, but you know, this might be a good time for you to call your agent and just verify or look at your policy and see, do I have replacement costs or is my policy an actual cash value policy? If you're unsure about it, we'll be glad to take a look at it with you to see if we can help you understand what you have. And if you have an ACV policy, an actual cash value policy, we'll do our best to get you a replacement cost policy to make sure you're adequately covered. So, so all right, so you're at this stage where you've got the damages repa repaired and, and everything is done. Uh, you'll get an invoice from your contractors. You want to send that into your adjuster. At that time, they will then cut a check to you or pay you the difference so that then at that time you get the recoverable depreciation back for your claim. You know, that's the different steps to it. So remember, just remember, if you get the ACV amount first, depending on the amount of the claim, don't panic. You'll get the rest of it back. You just need to show that you've done the work. So what's the last stage of the last thing, the, not the last stage, but the last topic we need to talk about is talking with the adjuster. You know, you need to remember that you're dealing with a person and this is a professional. This is what they do. They are highly trained in figuring out how much it's going to cost to get your house back right. Most of these people have family. They understand where you're at and what's going on in your life. And they want to do everything that they can to take good care of you and to make sure that your home is back in a good condition. They're not out to get you. They're not out to rip you off. They're not out to save the insurance company money as much, save the insurance company as much money as they can. They are out to make sure that they give, do a good job for you and to make sure that you're happy and to take care of you. Look, I know there's lots of bad reviews out there for insurance companies across the board. Every one of the insurance companies out there, unfortunately, have terrible reviews when it comes to claims. But here, here's the deal. People don't typically just go out and leave reviews for insurance companies just because. They don't typically go out and leave them whenever something really good happens either. They usually leave it about whoever their agent is. You know, you can take a look at us, do a Google search for Reed Insurance in Louisiana, and you'll see that we've got tons and tons of five-star reviews because we do a great job for our agent, for our, excuse me, for our clients. And um, so we got a ton of great reviews, but insurance companies just don't get that. Typically, the only time that there's a trigger that causes somebody to give a review is unfortunate when something bad has happened. And hey, here's the reality. We're all human and we all make mistakes and we all have bad days. And so sometimes that adjuster may have just had a bad day or they may just miss something. They may have something that really bad has happened in their life or they may be just not feeling very well. The, whoever they talked to before may have been very difficult. You know, understand that, that you're dealing with a person and just, hey, look, if they come across maybe a little bit sharp or something like that, just, you know, just, hey, ask them, hey, how's your day going? Look, I noticed that, may, you know, that maybe something's bothering you. You know, is this not a good time? Maybe we can talk at another time or something like that. Or just, you know, ask them how their day's going. And you'll probably find out that because you asked and you showed compassion to them, that they're going to work really hard, even harder, to make sure they take good care of you. Um, so be aware of that. Be aware of another thing is that sometimes it is a little bit hard to get them on the phone. Look, adjusters handle a lot of claims. They're usually very fast, but they spend a lot of time on the phone talking to claimants that just, they don't understand the claims process or they have questions or, you know, or they're trying to work something out for another client. 
understand that that it may be a little bit difficult so be watching for them to call you and just know that they're going to call you from a number that you may not recognize if they give you options for text messaging or email you may also use those avenues and maybe give them a time that's that's good for you and maybe schedule a time with them to talk that way it's that way both of you know hey this is a good time for us to talk so let's 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 stick to that okay um, so I think that is some tips that will help you to know how to make sure that the claim goes smoothly and that your experience with the adjuster goes smoothly. So I hope these four different tips that I've given to you will help you in your claims process, help you to understand what to expect so that you don't have to be scared whenever that day does come because the day will come one day when you have a claim and then you know, you'll need to go through these different steps and stages of the claim. If you haven't done so already, make sure that you hit subscribe to our channel so that you can find out more about how to have a good claims experience or a good insurance experience. Make sure that you're getting covered adequately. You know, every Thursday I'm going to post a new video, so make sure that you hit the subscribe button and also make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like this video. Hey, if you got any comments for us, any questions, make sure you leave them in the comment section down below. I'll be glad to answer those. I'll answer every last question or comment that you have and um, make sure that you understand all that you need or whatever questions that you may have. I'm glad to do that. If there's a certain video you would really like me to do, hey, leave that in the comment section also and I'd be glad to you know, address that for you. Um, check us out every Thursday. Also, you can check us out on our website. I've got a blog post, so if you'd rather read than watch the video, you can also see this content there as well. So I appreciate you and until next time, I hope you have a great day.